Hello, my name is Christine and I run a vintage shop called Prima Treasures on Etsy. This week I was working on these toasters and doing the research and they actually turned out to be kind of interesting so I thought this might be a good uh, topic for us to put into a video. So I got these three toasters together and they're all pretty old. Um, this one in the middle is from the 1920s and the two on either side are from the 1930s. So they're very early electric toasters and you can see they all have cords on them. Well, okay, I guess you can't see that, but anyway, um, the two over here on the left are called flip-flop or flopper toasters. And the reason for that is because they have these doors on the side that you put the toast in or you put the bread in and then you flip it up like this and it heats up down the middle and then when you want the toast, you pop open the door and from what I read, the toast would actually slide out onto your plate. Don't know if that's true, I haven't tested that theory. But anyway, this is the oldest toaster, it's from the 1920s and you can see inside here that it's got the little coils in the middle, so I'm kind of assuming that maybe just one side of your bread would get toasted. I didn't test it. But uh, anyway, so that one, is from the 20s as I said um, and I don't think it was a maker I had ever heard of. The one on the far left from the 30s has a very cool deco design and you know I think with the way that it looks you know it, if you had that in your kitchen in a modern kitchen now you know I don't think it would really look that out of place to be honest. So um, a lot of people like to use these as display props, and I think that's completely appropriate to do. But the thing that I thought was really amazing when I was uh, cleaning and testing these toasters is that every single one of them, when I plugged it in, actually got hot and turned on. So basically, you're talking about, in the case of these two on the sides, 90-year-old appliances. The one in the middle is basically a hundred years old and every single one of them still works which to me is kind of mind-boggling really. Now you know I didn't put bread in them and see how well they toasted but just the fact that they turned on without any you know extra work from me I didn't have to do any tinkering inside or anything like that I, I still think is pretty incredible. Um, so anyway this one over here is also a flip-flop type and you can see it has a little bit different configuration inside um, but as I said they all still work and I, I I still can't get over that which you know I realize is maybe not everybody would get into that but I think it's pretty cool now this one on the right is a little bit different and that's because um, I believe based on what I read that it is a variation on the very first pop-up toaster. So um, they called it the Toastmaster and this isn't the first version of it. Um, I think it's you know one of the latter versions of that original toaster. Uh, but still it's interesting to me um, because the way that they designed it, especially with the pop-up mechanism, it's basically mechanical. So I'm gonna show you how that worked. Oh you push the lever here and you can hear that it's ticking. Now this toaster is not plugged in, but the ticking mechanism, and I guess you would call it the pop-up mechanism, is clearly mechanical in nature. It's not reliant upon the electricity to do the timed uh, aspect of the toast. So, it, oh, and now it's done, because I didn't push it down very far. But, you know, it's got a little uh, knob on the side that lets you uh, set how dark or how light you want it. Um, and the only thing I did to these three toasters was basically clean them up a little bit and, you know, because they're very shiny, I wiped them down um, and tried to brush some of the gunk off of the bottom of the middle one. But for the most part, I didn't really do any heavy lifting with them. So, you know, any one of these would make a very unusual and interesting uh, prop for your kitchen and you'd have a good story to tell. 
But as I said, if you really wanted to be adventurous and show off, you could absolutely plug them in and show people that they still function, which I think is great. Um, now, obviously, if you wanted to use it for toast, you probably would have to do some rehab. They would all need um, probably uh, good cleaning inside. Um, when we plug them in, especially the oldest one, did not have a pleasant smell. So clearly the coils would need to be wiped down and all of that sort of thing so that it's nice and clean in there. Um, and, you know, it, they come with what I assume is the original cords because the cords are all cloth co covered and they look old. Uh, but you can buy replacements that are also cloth, so you can kind of keep the right look but still get something modern. They don't have modern safety features. So, you know, if you wanted to rehab it, put, out, put a new cord on it, that sort of thing, you could actually use these to make toast. Um, I don't know if you would want to, but it would be possible to do that. And as I said, I, I just find that so amazing to think that something a hundred years old, you could just pop into your kitchen you know, do a little rehab on it and get a functional toaster. Anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed the video today and I appreciate you watching.